Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PCSM pregame show. I am Poor Sorcerer, and once again, by Matram, and we are getting ready to sit down with the man, the myth, the legend, the guy from the team that has nothing to play for right now except for pride and cash money. It is Shrimzy. I know you're excited to talk to Shrimzy, man. Dude, I always love talking to Shrimzy. It's always a treat, always vocal, always going to give you exactly what's going on. So without any further ado, let's find out how they're going to slide their way into PGC with the extreme Herculean effort that it's going to take to PCSF. We are now joined by Shrimzy from the Sonics. We're going to get a deep dive to what's going on with him, his life, and why he has a stuffed husky in the background. Before, all right, so let's dive into some of this. Uh, you guys have been having a good year, no surprise. Uh, we were joking about before we got everything started. I mean, Sonics living the good life in North America, pretty much racking up some free money. Now, the thing we're looking at is moving forward into this, going from PCS7 into PGC. Are, like, are there any goals that you guys have as a team? Any change-ups you guys are trying to do? Or is it just same old, same old, keep sticking to the routine? Uh, the only thing that really matters is that we're improving every tournament, every game. That's the only thing that really matters now. We've already qualified for PGC. Obviously, we want to win PCS 7 and any other tournament that we ever have. But really, the ultimate goal is just to improve because whenever PGC comes around, we want to look the best we possibly can. We do not want to get 28th again. We do not want to get embarrassed. And that's what happened last year. So um, that's really the only goal ever is to improve. If we get second in a tournament and we feel like we played every game the best of our ability, then that's really all that matters. Usually, if we lose a tournament, it's because we didn't play. Usually, actually, if we win a tournament, we still didn't play as best as we possibly could. But all that matters is really improving. If we have a game where we get, you know, fifth place and we have 12 kills and we thought, wow, that game was perfect. We couldn't have played that game any better. That That's a great game for us. We don't care. Or I feel like I've heard that answer before. I, I don't know. It just feels like that to it's me. It's a good answer. I yeah. mean, it, it covers it covers just about everything. Um, well, I, I, I want to go back in time a little bit, Shrimsy. Mm -hmm. So uh, LCQ for uh, for PCS six mm -hmm. things. It, it seemed like things were kind of starting off a little bit slow for you guys. Was that more like PGC hangover? And, and then once once LCQ passed, it seemed like things really started to click for you. Was that kind of the case? Uh, I mean, to be honest, it was so long ago, I kind of forget, but I do remember struggling a little bit in PCS6, uh, group stage, we just barely missed out, I think we got 7th or something, and SCG qualified over us, yeah, and United qualified, and then we, I think we were winning LCQ going into the last game, but it was kind of like, you know, that we should have been way ahead, and we ended up getting second, so it's kind of like an embarrassing thing for us, but, I mean, stuff happens like that, I think it's a real, um, kick in the butt whenever stuff like that happens you know it's like a kick to getting gear uh so i think stuff like that is really good i think lg is going to have a great tournament this time because they had uh they missed out esl and i mean we ended up being a part of that but um i i think it was good for them i think having a, a tournament like that is going to really make sure that they have a great tournament this time i mean already they got second in what group stage but they they looked really good like they were they were dominating people and I think that that's a that's a thing that they were struggling with for a long time in NA is that they were they were playing every game like it was PGC when in reality we're in North America and these teams aren't near as good as the teams that they play against in PGC. And they always do well in internationals because they play like such a disciplined play style. But in North America, you can't play such a disciplined play style. You have to be loose and aggressive on teams that are making mistakes because a lot of mistakes will be made. So I think that this tournament or, or sorry, PCS six was actually really, really good for us. I know at the time it didn't seem like that. We, we ended up winning the grand finals and it was pretty convincing. I'd say, um, after like the, the day before the last day or whatever, we were pretty ahead. So I think stuff like that is actually really good for us. And I think I might've gotten off topic, but <laughs> Hey, it's allowed. It's allowed. <laughs> uh, you mentioned LG and it actually, uh, I was kind of curious, uh, for, uh, Nations Cup, you guys brought uh, Gunner as the coach. So mm. I was curious, did that give you guys like any insights into how LG plays because you're like specifically working with their coach and the strategies and we do know the fact that Gunner is very intrinsic to what's going on inside the team? I, I mean, I think if you know Gunner, you know exactly how he is. He was in the military <laughs> for, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how long he's in the military, but he likes everything to be kind of perfect. He likes the communications to be very directed towards the objective and he likes that everybody is on the same page it's very um 
strategized like everything is very organized that's just like his military way so whenever we brought him we knew kind of exactly what we were getting and we thought it was going to be the best thing for us and i think it was the best thing for us but unfortunately we didn't perform but no i don't think it gives us an, an insight into how lg plays i think we already knew how lg played just by being around the scene for so long and go knowing gunner and knowing luke and purdy and all the guys so i don't think it really gave us an insight because we kind of know them already Makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I, I guess it, it. This sucks, man. I keep getting. I keep getting the follow up questions, so I feel like I'm being <laughs> the, uh, you, the. Just the start with whatever you here. want. <laughs> but uh, but I kind of wanted to touch on on PNC a little bit too. I, mm -hmm. After I know watching your streams and, and stuff like that, you, you know, it, it, PNC hurt, right? It, yeah, it yeah, didn't sure. feel good coming back from that and i know that you in particular came back with like this whole new mindset about uh improving the grind right for for na improving the scrim uh culture improving all that stuff trying to do it to where uh north america be better at internationals what kind of stuff do you uh, are you are you and others working towards to try to uh help north america out when it comes to international competition um, so basically the whole mindset for me is like, if we're not getting good practice on our own region, then we're not going to perform internationally. And I, I can't tell you for how long, I think since the beginning of PUBG, I think there was only probably like a year or two where scrims were actually serious and good. But, um, ever since 2020, there's just been a lot of messing around in scrims and not taking them seriously. So whenever teams go into real games, they're not prepared for the real games. And if teams aren't prepared for the real games, then we are going to get worse games. And when those two come together and we go to international competitions, there has only been a number of competitions that North American teams have done well. And it's not usually North America as a whole. It's normally one or two teams that do well. Right, Last right. year, it was TSM. The year before that, it was us and Zenith. But I don't think anybody expected either of us to do extremely well i think that we were rated number one to go into the tournament but i think that's because we dominated north america and i don't think it was a thing that anybody really expected us to do well i thought stk had the best opportunity and they did do really well but it didn't equate to money because of the format um but yeah it's just i don't want to go into another international event and get embarrassed as a region because I think right now people would consider North America as the worst major region. And it's mm -hmm. not something that I pride myself on. It's something that I want to get better. That's why I try so hard to make our scrims better. That's why I grind stream a lot. That's why Tig grinds streams a lot. That's why HN grinds streams a lot. Mine's grinding off the stream a lot because he doesn't like to stream because of in incidents that have happened before. <laughs> but um, I yeah, no, I, it's just we don't. We don't want to get embarrassed as a region. It, it's mm -hmm. it it really is that it's that whenever we go to these events and we lose so poorly, it's embarrassing for us. We we pride ourselves on doing well. We pride ourselves on being the best. And when we go to these events and we get dominated per se, it's just embarrassing. We don't want that anymore. It's fun going as a as a caster and then having all the casters from the other regions go, hey, so which North America is going to show up? The one that comes <laughs> yeah. in and wins in the last week, or the one that just doesn't ever come in at all? And you're like. Yeah, uh, we're, we're hoping something shows up for that one. Yeah, uh, there's nothing you can say back because it's just, it's just true. Like, and Aven like, okay. Avenger is always it's always Avenger, man. It's always and he Avenger. always He's forgets the first one. It took Phase all the way to the last game in one of the PGCs, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll just always rip on the Sonics for that one. Let me let me add something. I just want to say, adding to Avenger, he did come up to us at PNC, and he said. Hey, you guys have Pachinki Picado. If you don't get at least top three, <laughs> you guys suck. And I said, you're right. And then after the event, he came up to us and he said, you guys suck. And I said, That's true. So I had to interview Mime, speaking of, shirtless. And I'm going to put quotations around that because I'm going to ask, did you guys bet him to do it entirely naked and he wasn't wearing pants as well? Because no, that's what no, I've heard. He, he did have pants on. We we told him because he's been working out a lot. He's been extremely confident with working out um, that he should go shirtless and he should be holding a shaker cup and shaking it just for like the memes, just to do it on purpose. 
<laughs> and he did it. I I don't know. Apparently, he told the people that he didn't have a shirt and that he didn't have a light. So yeah, no, it was hilarious because he like comes on shirtless, and I'm like, all right, so I'm gonna take my shirt off, and they're like, it's not allowed in mine. You're not allowed to either. <laughs> and they're like, go put on a shirt, and he's like, I don't own any shirts, and they're like, well, can you at least turn on some lights? And he's like, no, nah, the power is out right now, even though he's streaming on his computer, and they're like, okay, well, I guess that's fine. <laughs> Oh man, he's a character. But yeah, we told him to do it, and I'll give it to him. He did it. He had no problems doing it. So, I mean, it was content. It was funny. And that's the only thing he cared it was. About, we cared about. Content, baby. That's what we're here for. <laughs> uh, so speaking of content, uh, so you guys obviously, America's has been Sonics and E United for like over a year now, almost two years now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know, you know, obviously you guys uh, have a lot of fans, a lot of uh, stream viewers, all that stuff. And, uh, and you know, you'll say stuff about E United because that's your primary competition, right? I, I yeah. got to imagine being first and second all the time, trading back and forth. Mm-hmm. Do you think that E United are really rats? Or is that something <laughs> that just like started off, it got, it, your, 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 your fans got a hold of it, and now it's like nonstop in the PUBG chat about how E-United, oh, they're rats, they're rats, they're rats. What are your real thoughts on the E-United boys? Rat start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How is it that they're always called rats instead of snakes? Because that just seems like that's the way it should go, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't know. With that I team, think... how do you not? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I that that's a great point. I honestly have no rebuttal. I, used, <laughs> right. I even call Snakers Snake. That's like my nickname for him. I just call him Snake. There you go, Chad. I've, just, so you've I've been wrong this whole that. time. And Rat Start. So okay, yeah. I guess Man. I guess this is how he, how he really does feel about a United. They're just rats. Yep. Snake their way to late game, and that's hundred percent. Yeah. Somehow end up with. 15, we always have top kills. kills. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look at every tournament besides the last one, I'll, I will say. I was going to say you said ESL. always. I was like, hmm? besides ESL, <laughs> we have always had more kills than them. So United got a uh, drop bail frost right, picked up flood, mm-hmm. and did that specifically with designs on international competition. What are your guys? Uh, what have you guys done this year, kind of with the next PGC in mind? Obviously, uh, finishing twenty eighth has really stuck with you. I mean, you brought it up a couple of times now. I mean, that's that's not something you get over easy. I can't I imagine you can't wait to get to Dubai and yeah. uh, and really get back on the grind. But uh, what what kind of things have have you guys done as a team to kind of prep for international? Is there's anything really you can do? Uh, we've tried to reach out to other regions and, uh, try to scrim with them. Unfortunately, they've denied us. Apparently I I actually did get a message recently saying that we might be able to scrim in Europe, but, um, for the longest time they've told us that we weren't allowed to scrim in Europe because of, uh, PNC. Some teams were trolling from other regions, so they didn't want Mm. other teams from other regions, but I mean, for the most part, it's just us working together as a team and fixing our chemistry, making sure that it's on point, making sure that every scrim game, every real game that we get, that we're getting the most out of it, trying to improve our communications and our macro and our micro and everything. We watch all the twires. I mean, there's just so much that goes into it. But I mean, for the most part, all it comes down to is how we talk to each other and how we communicate in game and our micro in game because our macro has normally been really good h1 does a fantastic job getting us into late game and it's just all about how we communicate with each other through late game it's really that's that's really it i mean there's no other secret like (laughs) really it's just how we how we communicate with each other because if we usually whenever we mess up it's a big mess up like Mm -hmm. one one like small mistake leads into our whole game being over and that's how fast PUBG. that's how fast Mm -hmm. PUBG is and if you if you have those consistently you'll have a bad tournament and i think that's kind of what kind of why lg has been messing up recently is because they usually have like one bad team fight and it ruins their whole game and they could have had a 20 like a 20 point game but it leads into like a three point game because they lost that team fight and they set themselves up really well but they just mess up in like one team fight and it kind of ruins them and that's how it can work for a lot of teams and that's why a lot of teams don't do well we usually end up winning our fights but it's about not losing that one player that we we lose in the team fight, which could have been avoided or 
saving our util, which could have been avoided. Like we just dumped it randomly instead of saving it for a late game. And we could have won that, which would have been, you know, seven extra points. And if that stays the trend for the whole tournament, that could have been 70 extra points and we would have won or we would have been way further ahead. It's just stuff like it's it's small things like that that really add up and in the long run can either make or break a tournament. So it's just about improving yourselves, really. I feel uh, it's it's been a trend over the past year or so or two years really, but you guys loot Pachinki so freaking fast, like you are in and out of there so quick. What is it? Uh, how do you loot so fast? Like, what is it that you're looking for? When do you say, okay, we're done, we can move now? Is it more like a result of the circle, or is it more like we don't need to stick around and do all this stuff? We've got. A, a certain set of items that we want to make sure that everybody has, and then we can go. Uh, it's always based on the circle, depending on the circle and plane bath. Okay. If plane bath is far east and the circle's far west, we know that we could loot stuff inside zones. So it's like, how much us gun go? And then we're in circle and we're looting the center compound because we know that nobody will be there based on the circle and the plane bath. But if, like, say it's an east zone and the plane is east, we know that it's going to be filled and scattered with teams already. So we just get everything that we possibly need, usually for the most part, unless we know that we're beating somebody on timing. Um, it's we just loot up as long as we possibly can. As long, I mean, usually we don't really get everything we need because Pachinki Picado don't have that great of loot. I know that everyone thinks that it does because we leave so fast, but really it doesn't. Um, so most of the time, you when you're leaving, you're underlooted. Yeah, most of the time, whenever we leave, we're undiluted. I would say probably like 80% of the time, I don't have like either a scope or like a two vest or like a kitted M4 or something, you know, just something that I, I would I would want. I don't have normally my guns aren't kitted and I have lower gear than most people. But usually by the time we get inside zone and we either take a fight or we get to loot the compound that's in zone, I usually can have most things that I want. It's not like I'm struggling most of the game i think that some games i do but it's it's pretty rare well you mentioned twire usually we're gonna, we've been asking people like hey you you can pick one person on your team and you can't pick yourself what's your fantasy mm -hmm. team but you said the fact that you've already got yours established so now i, I guess that just makes it easy unless you have yourself on your team do you have yourself on your team no i never put myself on my own team it's hmm. just like a toxic thing that i do it's i i i'm not like superstitious but this is like the one thing that i do that is like kind of superstitious it's just i'll never put myself on my own team you were on my pnc team so i don't think i'll be putting shrimsy <sighs> on my oh. i think i'll i think i'll follow you on oh. that one that's fair <laughs> i can't even argue that's just that's just fair <laughs> who's your roster man um my roster is tig if you don't have tig on your roster you're trolling yeah um if Flood, you can afford four is, other players. I can't afford four other players, and I get four good players or three other good players. Three, um, yeah. Flood, since he is on, I don't know if anybody knows this now, or most people probably don't know this, but he is in Virginia now. He will be playing PCO mm -hmm. 7 from Virginia, so he's on four ping. So I have two imports on low ping. Um, Gats from BUB, he's only 15,000, so I think he's going to have a good tournament. And Papa Sizzlin. Who's always oh, consistent. Sizzling, Sizzling is That's always very consistent. I have three non-North American players and Gats. Hey, and well, I mean, let's be I, honest. Well, it's whatever we look at Australia. It's kind of the Americas now, right? We pick up all their good players. So <laughs> yeah, that's fair. It's like yeah, America's point five. Yep. I mean, everyone always says NA carried by imports. So I'm just, you know, following the trend. Do you feel carried by imports? I feel carried by one import. I have to say <laughs> that. Import. I have to say that to get uh, viewers on my stream. <laughs> okay, it's allowed. <laughs> Texas is carrying Sonics. It's fine. Everybody <laughs> knows it. Thanks once again to Strimzy. Always a great time sitting down with that man and, and talking PUBG and life in general. I know he's got a lot of fans out there. I know Sonics have a lot of fans out there. And I'm sure the Sonics are doing great right now. We're not caster cursing them like two weeks in advance, right? No, no, there is no such thing as a caster curse. And even if we did, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I, I really, let's just go ahead and throw it to toffees because all of this has just been fluffing.